Hey designers, welcome back to my online store series where I'm showing you the full process of building out my store using Webflow e-commerce. We've gotten pretty far into the build now, so if this is the first video that you're watching in the series, you might wanna go catch up on the rest. There'll be a link to a playlist in a card and also in the description. Uh, we can go and check those videos out. In this video, we're getting onto a really important part of the store and that is the checkout and the order confirmation page. So that the page that people see after they click place order and buy their prints from my store. In the last video, I showed you how the cart works in Webflow, how it was a component that I could add things to and style how I like. And the checkout page is kind of similar. If we come over to our pages here, you'll see that checkout is one of the pages that gets created for you when you enable e-commerce on your Webflow site. So let's go into this page. You're basically gonna see a lot of very wide form fields. This is not a blank page and I like that they're not making me start with a blank slate for the checkout because that would require me to think about you know, and remember all the details that need to go in. This is all the compulsory stuff that needs to be on your checkout form. Um, but obviously I can work with this and style it however I like, just like I've been doing with other components. So let's get into it. I didn't actually create a design in Figma for the checkout page like I did the other pages in my store, just because I didn't feel like laying out all of these boxes, to be honest, laying out all these form fields. I think I'm just gonna like go with my gut, design it on the go and, you know, create something that fits with the rest of my site. But if you do wanna design it in advance, which to be honest is a pretty good idea, um, I would suggest looking at this page and seeing what all the fields are so you can make sure that you're including them in your design as well. It'd be a handy like thing to refer to. Oh hey, it's voiceover Charlie back again to explain what I'm doing. Uh, I'm just adding in a section for my header here, making it green, and then I'm adding in the symbol that I created previously. I think it was in episode two for my menu. Now I don't really want my form to be stretching the full width of the page, so I'm gonna add in my container div here. And then I'm gonna add some columns actually, because I want people to be able to see what they're ordering as they're going through and filling out the form. I think that if they're reminded of like the great products that they're gonna get at the end of all this, then they'll be more encouraged to actually go through and fill out all these form fields. So I just moved all the details from the checkout form into one of the columns. Um, and then if you go to the elements panel, you'll see that when you're on the checkout page, there is a few extra elements you can add. So I'm gonna add this order items one into the second column. And that'll mean that my items will be there hanging out next to the form. Then at the bottom, I'm actually gonna make use of this other one, which is the order summary. I'm going to add it right underneath the billing address. I want them to see, okay, this is like one last final check of everything I'm ordering and what I'm paying for. Personally, I always like to like be reminded of exactly what I'm paying before I click that buy now button. Just like I've done some overlapping things on my product pages, on my product cards, I'm gonna have this checkout form overlap the green header section here. So to do that, I'm just gonna add a negative margin to the top, move it up. Here, I'm just going through and adding some classes and doing some styling on this block uh, to take away the, the default that it had and add in my own styling to match my site. So I'm changing the borders, changing the background, adding a little bit of a shadow to it, basically just getting it to look like it fits in with the rest of my site. I've added some rounded corners to this block uh, and now I'm just going to go through and apply that class to all of the other blocks on this page. So once I made that class on that first box it's pretty easy to just come down and click on each other element that I needed on and add the class to it. You just have to start typing the first few characters and then it appears in the drop down list there that I can click on. Just playing with the spacing a bit, making sure everything feels like it's got, you know, just a bit of breathing room. And of course, can't forget this button, making it green and with capital letters for the button text, just like all the other ones on my site. These required signs are looking a little bit obnoxious, so I'm gonna go through and add uh, a class to make them a bit smaller. So I'm doing the same thing here, where I make a class and edit the styling for the one box, and then I just go through and apply that same thing. 
and then doing the same thing again for all of the form field labels on this page. It's starting to match my design a lot better. Um, maybe the color in these fields should be a little bit different. I feel like the gray I've been using on my site is a bit cooler. I want this little block here of my items, and um, there's still some styling to do with it, but I want it to stick there on the screen as I scroll down so that it's always in view as you're scrolling and, and finishing this form. If I set flex stretch on the div that contains my columns, that means that both of my columns are gonna be the same height. And then what I can do is use one of my favorite little CSS hacks. Um, let me add a class to this. I'm gonna position this item block as sticky, which means it'll stick in the place for the whole length of the div. Um, let me add a height to it. Let's test it as I scroll down. There we go. That little order block stays in place. And actually, if I want to add a little bit of padding above it, there we go. I think that's nicer. Because these prints here kind of look like um, they did in my cart, I'm going to style them just to make sure that they uh, look, look kind of similar. copying in my footer like I've done on all the other pages. Doing a little bit of rearranging here in this order summary uh, block just to make things sit where I want them to, to kind of match with the cart like I said, and then changing the, the styling of the text as well. Right now I'm swapping out the text here to be H6 headings so that it matches better with the styling that I did on my cart. Um, so even though this isn't a CMS collection we created or anything, it works the same throughout the checkout form. So right here for this H6, I'm going to tell it to get the text from the extra items, which is what this block is called, name. Um, and then it'll put that in there. And this is their shipping class, so whatever shipping class they've selected, that's what will show up there. You've got to be careful to make sure you're doing that because you don't want to like type that out manually, what you see here in the example page. Um, because obviously you want it to be updated depending on what people select in your checkout. You can tell if something's dynamic content in your layers list by if it's purple. So I know that anything that's purple, I have to make sure I connect it to a field if I'm going to be changing, changing out the way things are arranged and what element is used there. Cool, I think I'm happy with that. Let's just check out what it looks like on different device sizes. Mm, this one obviously needs some work. <laughs> The cool thing about Flexbox, I like that you can set it to be horizontally arranged on one breakpoint, but then vertically on another. It makes it really easy to change things around for breakpoints like this. And basically what I decided to do was just center all this content. I thought that that would look better on this size screen. make use of Flexbox ordering here to put uh, my items in order list up the top on mobile when it can't really follow you down the page because it would get annoying and take up too much room. For this screen size I decided that perhaps I didn't need to have my prints taking up quite so much space just because I know they're taking up a lot of vertical screen real estate. So that's my checkout page done. I've added this little block at the side that scrolls down with you and reminds you what you're ordering. And then I added the order summary too. Let's make sure we also style the error states that we need to as well. I think that'll be fine. Um, okay, let's move on to the order confirmation. And what I wanna do is make the order confirmation look fairly similar 
to the checkout just so it's a nice seamless experience once you click place order um, that you're ending up in a familiar place so um, to do that I'm going to copy this header here actually just hit copy come over to the order confirmation page just like with a checkout this one puts in the vital information in the page for you um, and then there's a bunch of extra things you can add so if you want to remind them what payment info they used what order items they had um, all that sort of stuff is things I can add starting out with this just like the last page by adding my header but this time I just copy and pasted it from the checkout page the footer as well and I'm doing the same thing here where I'm putting the form into a container and then also adding columns to it I'm going to copy this block here with the items in my order bring it over and paste it into the column here do you see where I'm going with this? I'm kind of going to style these elements to match um, the checkout form. Just like on the checkout page, going through and adding that same class that I did for all the blocks on there so that these all match exactly. It also means that if I decide I want to change that style, I just have to change it on the class and it'll automatically update across um, all of the places that I've applied it. As you see me swapping back to the checkout page every now and then while I'm laying out this uh, order confirmation page, it's just because I wanted to check that visually these things are aligned and that they're looking like they came from the same place. I also started to style the order summary and then realized that duh, I already had it on the checkout page so I should just copy and paste it over from that and all of the styling that I wanted would be attached. Alright, I think I'm done. So here is my finished checkout page. As you scroll down and you're filling out all these fields, this little block will go down with you. Once your order is placed, this is what you'll see. It's the same sort of layout, so it'll look familiar and it'll look like it'll have good continuity. And again, this um, little item block is sitting at the side there as you scroll down, so you're always reminded what you ordered. This brings us to an end, actually, of all of the pages that I needed to design in order to get this store live. So that feels good. We've made some great progress. Um, there is a few last little details left, though, that we're going to tackle in the next video, which is the last video in the series. Things like some final settings, um, the emails that customers will be sent when they place an order. I got to tackle the design of those, make sure that they're all cohesive and looking like they came from my store. So stay tuned for that. That'll be in the next video. If you've been liking the look of Webflow e-commerce from what you've been seeing, in these videos so far then you should go check it out for yourself there'll be a link on screen right now also one in the description where you can go and check it out start playing around with it and making your own online store all right thank you for watching this video and i'll see you in the next one the last one in the series all right bye